imagine where God would have taken me if I had sexual discipline. I, I am nowhere near the orbit of what my possibility was if I had self-discipline. My greatest enemy has been me. Not my ex, not racism, not the system. Mm -hmm. It's been me. And once I have a full scope that I have become, had become a terrorist of self-sabotage. Then I had to stop being a Unabomber. Because I was blowing up my own stuff. Mm. On people who I knew I didn't want to be with. Mm. And who wasn't even worth it. Mm. Come on now, don't black out on me now. No, I'm just trying to. I'm, I'm you trying don't to, went I, somewhere. Come on, stay with okay. me. So wow. he said a lot of his problems are because, Him. first of all, it wasn't because of racism, it wasn't because of this or that. It was because he couldn't control himself. Sounds like a like a big boy move right there, playing. Are you, are, are you not impressed? No, I'm not. Um, yeah. I mean, that's one of the first things in a long time I've heard at least sem somewhat seemed like he was taking some accountability for the stuff he was doing. But, you know, you'll tell me that you're struggling with sexuality and things of that nature, which obviously you are. But the uh, we had a recent story with the youth pastor that you have at your church. Um, the young lady who was dressed like she was not heading to church around the kids. And some folks may say, well, she may dress like this to be relatable. The Holy Spirit don't need no help. You don't got to wear skin tight leather pants and shirts and six inch heels to go teach kids at the church. Um, yeah. And, and, and it's just like, he's a smart man. He see what's going on on social media. He knows the, the, the narrative that's around his name and why people think criti critically of him and things of that nature. And he says these things. And I really truly hope that it does start a change, but it's still things currently going on that show that you still have this problem. And another thing, if you were a pastor all this time and you're so aware of this problem that you had, why didn't you just sit down and go get the help that you need? Mm -hmm. Why would you continue to stay in the pool pit knowing that this is a full struggle that's pro prohibiting you from moving forward or going to the places that you know God is trying to take you? Why not stop and get the help that you need? Why continue doing that? And the reason why he frustrates me so much as a black man and a black man in a pool pit, it's already so many stereotypes about us. You look at the flashy suits. You see people buying jets and cars and boats and all this stuff. Yeah. And the things they say, Pastor coming out saying, if you broke, you in sin. Like all this foolishness that surrounds the black church. Uh, you look at movies and stuff, the way they depict the pastor, they're going to have a Jerry curl along with the robe and, the, <laughs> ah, and, and like making fun of us and doing all this stuff. So <laughs> when you have credible people like a Philip Mitchell, when you have people who've been solid standing in the world like an Eric Mason, when you have a Dr. James Cone and many other black theologians who strive on giving you solid biblical teaching, right, yeah. and then you have somebody who have a huge platform like this and they constantly say things out of their mouth that are ignorant and foolish and do things to make yeah. us look bad as yeah. if they're only thinking about themselves and what's happening with them and not looking at the larger scope of things or how other people are affected. It reminds me of the story of Aiken when well, after Joshua and them guys conquered the land and God said, hey, don't steal anything. Don't take anything. Like, leave all this stuff. And then Achan took the stuff. And when he took it, Israel went out and they lost their lad, the, next, uh, the next battle to Ai, a small enemy. They lost the battle. Yeah. Why did they lose the battle? Because one person put his needs and his personal agenda over the agenda of the whole group. Yep. And because of that, he ended up being penalized. Now, I don't want to see this man get penalized. It doesn't give me joy to see this man get tore down and drawn through the mud as a man saying that he's a believer or somebody, a follower of Christ. But also, when I'm seeing you doing these things, leading people astray, you're saying things that are not biblical and solid. You're making jokes. you say I was in an open marriage. My wife just didn't know. Think about the woman that was hurt in that situation who was being trying to be faithful. Like, you're making jokes and saying these things. But as a man who, who went to, I think he went to Duke University Seminary, as a man who started out 
saying some like groundbreaking, very intelligent right. things. I'm seeing as your platform gets larger, you're straying further and further away from yeah. sound biblical teaching, and you're affecting a lot of people. You got a whole congregation of a church over there who subscribing to what you say, and people around the world who listen to this stuff. Yeah. You got to have some accountability. So yeah, you can come on this show and say, hey, yeah, this is my struggle, and I get that. We all struggling with something. But let me see you really feel like this your struggle. Let me see you sit down and go get some counseling and get some help and let somebody else pass to that church for a minute. Let me see you stop doing podcasts and talk shows and all this kind of stuff. If you say this situation is that serious to you, that is keeping you from really reaching God's people the way you want to reach them. Yeah. Why keep going? Because you're doing more damage than you're doing help right now. People are calling you a false teacher. I believe, I, I'm going to put it like this. You got a lot of false teachings. <laughs> and sometimes you can have a false teaching and not necessarily be a false teacher. You might just have a misunderstanding of certain things. But when you're consistently saying stuff that is not biblical, consistently doing things that go against scripture, yeah. after a while, if you're outside the liquor store and you're drunk and you're staggering around, what are you? <laughs> right. If you're overweight and you eat too much and you're outside the buffet what, all the time, what are you? If you eat cheese... <laughs> and you got a tail and you run around <laughs> and they catch you in a trap. What are you? Like, you got to call it for what it is. So, yeah, yeah I, I see that. It sounds like he's holding himself accountable. But I want to see real accountability on a, on a public platform continuous. I want to sure. see as much consistent damage and foolishness that come out of your mouth. I want to see consistent, wow. all right, for, like, positivity. First of all, uh, shout out to Bro Lloyd sending on biz for the super chat. We appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, second of all, what if this just happened? Playing like what? What if he just, <laughs> nah. what if he just realized? Man. You know what? It's, this pro the problem is me. I I'll just say James. this. I, nah, I see his. I see his frustration yeah. because yeah. he just he still made it about him, yeah. not realizing how he affects others. I I've known of and known about and known Pastor Jamal Bryant all my life. Oh, wow, he's from Baltimore. Well, he was in Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah. Like. 15 minutes where he started I lived yeah so I had friends family who all went to that church yeah I watched him grow from the beginning yeah and we all knew he was crazy <laughs> 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 like to be honest I'm just being honest like the stuff that James sees now yeah was is just a it's a, a product of being exposed it was stuff in the background that I saw as a young man before being saved that I was like, I ain't dealing with that. I ain't messing with that. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. this is just the open. There was private things that we saw that yeah, were already yeah, yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So now when he says, well, I'm my own worst enemy, he still isn't realizing that he has a bigger responsibility than yeah. even just himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, what you've done has not just affected you. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. affected everybody yeah. else. Yeah. So now show yeah. show how you 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 have a, a idea serious. and thought of how yeah. you're affecting everything around you as even well. Even in that you know statement, I mean? I, there's no telling how high I could have went. How high I could have went. You thinking about if you had not sinned and done this stuff, mm -hmm. how high you could have went. Not man, had I not sinned. Right. Yeah, and done exactly. this thing properly, I could have right, impacted exactly. more people for right. the kingdom of God. You're thinking right, about right, you right, and your right, platform. Right, right. And that's the problem. You're being selfish. Yeah. Like you're not thinking about the people that you're impacting. And it, and it, and it mm -hmm. makes me upset because, like I said, like we already got enough against us as it is. It's yeah. already enough stereotypes that I hear about our people in the pulpit as it is. Yeah. People don't take us seriously. You got the man screaming on BET in the middle of the night. You got people with Miracle Spring water and, yeah. and handkerchiefs and all this stuff. Like, when they think about church, people who don't believe and they come yeah. home from the club at night and they see this stuff on TV, and that's what they think the black church is. Yeah. Or they yeah. always highlight, oh man, he got all money suit on. Or he bought a plane, he bought a jet. Or he said, let's grow weed at the church. Yeah. Or he said he was at an open marriage but his wife didn't know. Or he brought Kamala out here to his church. And now yeah. they're looking at him like he's the face of the black church. Well, you yeah. don't even... Like, why you want to be the face of a black church? That means pretty much we weren't even allowed to be a part of the church as a whole. We had to separate and do our own thing. And you're claiming these things as an intelligent black man, supposedly in a pool pit. Yeah. I just can't respond. So it's a plain, plain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You didn't disappoint, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we picked this topic for you. Yeah. You didn't disappoint. But Thank you. Y'all set me up. <laughs> and James started this. turning the color of his hat, man. I ain't man. never seen him. I'll say this, too. <laughs> There's no accountability there because he's confessing to who? Cam Newton? Right? I think Isn't he was Cam trying Newton? to. I think he was trying to convict Cam Newton about his life. No, but you don't do that. You, if you were seriously talking about this, is how you you exactly. feel like you could be doing better. 
Say that to a brother in Christ. Say that to a real pastor that can hold you accountable. Well, to he's that. not saying it for himself. I think he was saying it to get Cam to say the same thing about his life. Yeah. Well, then that's wrong you because know it you're just talking. It does apply, but I mean, you got two people because you didn't let the clip play any further. But Cam was like, "Nah, this that oh." Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't a ponderant. It think, was, it was a ponderance. Was it wasn't a. I think that was the point, though. I think he was trying to get Cam to think that hey, some of the things in your life may be your fault. That's dumb. I think that was the point. <laughs> but all I'll say this for Jamal Bryant, I I agree. I think he should not be a pastor. Should never have been. Um, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it did it did shock me, and it 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 gave me hope that hopefully God is working on his heart and. Maybe, 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 maybe he is our brother. It just gave me hope that maybe he might yeah. actually be. Yeah, only God know the heart of man. He yeah. could be saved, but yeah. he don't need to be no pastor. Yeah. <laughs> this is a. It feels very yeah, that's, business like. Yeah, that's right. It feels. It feels, it feels <laughs> very brother, business like. You know what I'm saying? Like it's um. <laughs> what James pointed out, you know, I could have been this. I could have been that. You're right. It feels more like business. Like man, I could have more subscribers on my platform, but I also feel like too. His audience and his target audience is the lukewarm Christian. Mm, Stay like me. Stay like me. Like let's be let's be lukewarm together. Again, I'm gonna say it again. I'm hoping (laughs) I'm hoping that this is a sign that God is working on. Because I did not expect him to say that this is my fault. I I I did not expect him to say that. So to me, I'm hoping. But then I'm just there's a hoping. lot that he needs to apologize for because he still is the person that says, Hopefully as the black church, I'm going to apologize to the gay it, community. Okay. Like, he said that yesterday. I'm hoping today yeah. something's <laughs> happening. Then he but, said we need to redefine the lines of sexuality because there's more women than men out here. So we need to redefine what we call. Man, come on. He bro. said that yesterday. Yeah. I'm hoping that today <laughs> God yeah. is doing something in his can life. I, can I say, I, I think this, man. Um, I've never met Jamal Bryan a day in my life, so I... You know what I mean? Don't come on the show. You know what I'm saying? Um, you just got to be there when he's there <laughs> playing. I'll be, I'll okay, be I'll be. Yeah. yeah. I, I think this, man. Um, I want it, I love to give people grace, even if they're wrong. Um, but at the same time, I think we're in a time where, like, you know, Philip Mitchell did send some shots his way, too. I remember him talking about him and different things and people um, doing different, um, talking about him and stuff. I, I just think. To me, like, God, what is it that the black church, like, when, when okay, prime example, we, we, we just, I just talked about Philip Mitchell, and the comments for him, he's speaking the Bible, he's speaking truth, like, yo, if you don't repent, you're going to go to hell, and I feel like people sometimes be like, you're being judgmental, you're being this, you're being that, and I'm like, like, even I just said that a few minutes ago, and I had to take my just thoughts back, like, but... If you're speaking the truth and you're tr- and you're trying to warn people from hell, then why are we getting condemned for telling somebody to say, "Hey"? And then like even Ryan just say like lukewarm, and I'm like, I don't know if everybody in New Birth is lukewarm. You know what I'm saying? Like in my mind, but then at the same time, and I'm sure when we drop this video solo, and people from his church or whatever comment, they're gonna be like, "Yo, why y'all judging this man? He he." He helped me out of this situation. He did this, um, but at the same time, I feel like we gotta we gotta take our minds off of temporary pleasure here in this earth. And the reason I'm saying all that is because sometimes when you preach that type of theology, your thoughts about here is more important than eternal thinking. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. And I feel like sometimes when you don't think eternally, mm-hmm. you're you're you would you would rather the car versus. Jesus, you would rather the nice house than Jesus, no. or you would rather, hey, I want to have both. And Jesus may say, I don't want you to have both. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this. I think, um, I think it's partially our fault. I think we rad- radicalized James. Um, if, if I put, if I put a supercut of all the topics we've done on, <laughs> uh, that we've done on Jamal Bryant. It's hard to look at this man and be like, yo, this man is a Christian. <laughs> he should be a pastor. Yeah. It's, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking back to some of the old topics. I'm going to do it. I'm going I'm to smash them all together <laughs> yeah. into one long video. <laughs> this is Jamal Bryant because yeah. if you haven't seen some of the crazy, crazy things he said about God, it's unbelievable. Yeah, Jesus didn't pull his potential. He said something like yeah. that. Jesus sinned and all this kind but of But then they just start. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. It's, it's been just, like he this. Got yeah. it. he became, <laughs> like in my hometown on the radio, they give yeah. him... 
a platform yeah. to call in <clears throat> and the biggest station there yeah. and he would talk. He and, does that in Atlanta. Yeah, B-103, well, he does it now, yeah. right. So it was like, I wasn't even saved. He, he, I'm a definite product of what he did where I was like, I'm not going to church. Wow. Look at, look at that dude. Like, I, all the chicks at your church, that's what the ones we knocking down. Wow. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that was the mm. idea and the thought. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm mm. straight away. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be a part of that. And yeah. I didn't even know God. I didn't even pick wow. up a Bible. So but I, remember, I knew better. You yeah, know I remember one time they had a video. And this was when he was at in Baltimore. Yeah. And Common was there. Yeah. And and the lady was talking to Common like, yeah, we, we're happy to have you here. Um, yeah, it's 10 o'clock. They just yeah. come from the club. They, they, they may yell, but, you know, yeah. it's all right. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. And what you're saying is like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like you in, endorsing behavior and, and like i said we don't we i'll say this we don't have a problem if you're on your walk and this is your journey and you go to new birth and you just like man i'm this this has been a blessing to my life i was in the streets i was doing this i was on a pole i was whatever mm-hmm. we just want you to know is that eternal damnation is real yeah and if you're under somebody that's maybe leading you astray you know or maybe you're not even picking up the bible Cause sometimes people go to churches like that mm-hmm. they don't pick up the bible they yeah. just listen to the message and listen to it over and over or put certain scriptures to use to justify their life yeah so we're just saying pick up the word of god and yeah. test the spirit this yeah. young lady in the comments said james nobody's of good moral character like the bible does say no man is righteous no not one however mm-hmm. It also said those who aspire to be leaders will be under stricter judgment. Mm-hmm. Why are those leaders under stricter judgment? Because there are a higher expectation for you to live according to the word because you have been put in the position of a leader. You have an accountability as a leader to instruct people. That's why he set apart pastors, teachers, preachers, evangelists, all these different things to be leaders, to be led by the Holy Spirit, to instruct God's people in the way of scripture. If you're in that position, and you're not instructing people in the way of scripture, but you have this influence and you're leading people to the road of destruction, you can't use the excuse, all I have sinned and fall short of yeah. the glory of God. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. not doing the job correctly. Yeah. Like, nobody's perfect. Nobody yeah. deserves to be up there. Yeah. It's by God's grace and God's calling that says, hey, I'm gonna put you in this position. And you walk humbly, in fear and trembling with a reverence for the Lord and you study his word to show yourself approved a workman needed not to be ashamed yeah. rightly dividing this and yeah. teaching this like you don't go up there and just say whatever comes to your mind first and and the, and the people of God are at your mercy when you, whatever you however you feel and whatever you think that day right. so you can't come yeah. to me and say nobody has a good moral character of course the scriptures say that however God is still calling people to do ministry and if you're not meeting those characteristics properly you don't need to be up there yeah, yeah. You, you're not you are not allowed to talk to God's people anymore you've proven yourself to be untrustworthy he should not be a pastor I do hope he becomes a Christian Jesus but he should not be a pastor <laughs> yeah. ever yeah and I wasn't um, talking about the new birth congregation I was really talking about um, the audience of people mm-hmm. that are drawn audience, to him yeah. like they, it it's he makes lukewarm Christians feel good about themselves. He makes them feel like I can stay in this place of complacency and I don't have to change. And that's what scares me the most is that you got people who are delaying their salvation, delaying, you know, really coming to Christ because they're listening to what you're saying and being led astray by it. Or they're staying, they're further behind in their walks because they're not turning off what you're saying and picking up the word and getting it for themselves. I'll, I'll say I'll say this. Um, I, I think that... I think that we 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 placed our concerns. We have the we have the concerns, and we and we're not coming from a place of a judgment because he said one thing. I think we're coming from a place of over time. It's been things that one like you heard, but not even you heard. We just had clips where we just like you said, like back to back clips of just him saying stuff like, "Yo, I want to give." Do this yeah, or do these that. These are not but, misunderstandings. Yeah, we didn't yeah. misunderstand him. Yeah, no. yeah. And it's, and we don't obvious. have no hit list to get nobody. You know, somebody could be like, "Yo, y'all did this with Kirk. Right. Y'all, y'all don't do this to the white people." Like, yeah, no, yeah. we. This is our culture, quote unquote. We're we're yeah. black people, so when we see stuff in the culture, we we we're looking at it from a biblical lens and like, yo, that doesn't seem right. Yo, what about this? What about that? Are we perfect? No, we're not perfect. But at the same time, you know. You, you you have to see stuff that you see and going, this doesn't seem what the Bible talks about. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. The word of God says, 
you know, you know, one man has one wife. Like you, you should delight in your wife. You should love your wife. Yeah. You should, you should do these things. You should, you should not talk ill about not ill, but like you shouldn't like say stuff that that contradicts what this talks about. You know what I'm saying? What the Bible talks and about. Joke about. Yeah. It. Or I, I just feel like. I feel like we're, we're, we're just placing our concerns. James is placing his concerns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's saying based on biblical scripture, biblical scripture, what a leader is, he doesn't fit the criteria of what a leader is based off the word of God. And I think if you're watching this and you're saying, you know, judgment, judge, we all judgment, judgment, I would say, look to. at your, look at, look at the scriptures, go in the word of God or Google what does the scripture say about leaderships and what a biblical leader is yeah, like? Yeah. Study Absolutely. yourself approved. Yeah. Yep. Especially in this time we're in now, you got to study yourself yeah. approved because yeah, if you yeah, yeah. don't, then you're going to be swayed by anybody yeah. you see. Yeah. Especially if we're in the era of the, your ears <laughs> tinkling. Like if somebody's saying something I like, I'm going to continue to go to that person I like. You know what right. I'm saying? So all we're saying is study yourself approved. If somebody doesn't have good character, if any of us don't have good character, I'm sure we would say yeah. stuff about yo. But this is not. This is that's the problem. This is not bad character. This is bad preaching. Yeah. He's teaching people the wrong thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's saying false things. <laughs> yeah, stop doing that. It's yeah. false doctrine. Yeah, it, as a he, pastor, it, I yeah. definitely consistent. Yeah. There's I a lot of people who have yeah. bad character, yeah. and God could God, yeah. God could help yeah. you through that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you're intentionally telling people things that are wrong. Yeah. That's wrong. You yeah. can't do that. And we are in the and, and the church. <laughs> hey, that church has been wild for y'all been wild for a long time. <laughs> yeah. This is not yeah, the first yeah, pastor yeah. that, 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 that there's been a problem. Y'all yeah. need to get him out because or shut it down. Shut it down. Get him out or Yo, shut it you, down. You know, you know the Baptist. I'd rather shut it down to. before I have a synagogue of Satan. But you know how the Baptist that like right. you're when you're part of the Baptist convention, it's not like it's a vote yeah. in, like he got voted mm -hmm. in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean at the end of the day, it's one of those things where it's a like A lot of people have been voting wrong recently. <laughs> Get him out, <laughs> shut it down. Get him out it's or shit. shut it down. Y'all gotta say it though, it's the people. Yeah. It's the people, bro. It yeah. Ain't, it ain't just the leader. The yeah. people put him in position. If I if you make me feel comfortable in my sin, I'm gonna keep coming here. Yeah. 